Welcome back to Switch to Linux. It is Monday and it is time for another Linux Top 5. And uh, what we're going to look at today is our top 5 reasons to use Linux in 2018. So we're going to go ahead and dive right on in here. Number one, security seems better. <laughs> okay, uh, and I'm not going to throw out the same arguments people have said because we've been fighting about this forever. You know, is it due to better security? And then some people will say, well, look at the security bug things and how many more there are on Linux and other places and blah, blah, blah. A lot of those arguments have been thrown out. Very briefly, the reason you see a lot more of those is because Linux is open source. They're documented better. Uh, if Microsoft discovers some security vulnerability, they don't, they only release it to the public if someone else discovered it. Um, but regardless, a lot of the power in Linux and security has traditionally been uh, security by obscurity. It's not a big enough target. I'm not talking about any of that in this time. What I am talking about in, in the terms of better security is that we have seen a lot of very interesting things in the recent, uh, recent months. Uh, Apple, for example, is Apple getting sloppy? They released their latest High Sierra and typing root and an empty password would get you into any system setting. You could take full control of the system, either locally or remotely, by simply going into, um, you know, any, any password prompt, hit root and empty password. That is a horrible security thing. And even right now, uh, to my knowledge, last week, late last week, there was another one which indicated that, guess what? That password issue is still a problem on uh, the, I want to say it's the App Store. You can't get into any system settings, but you can actually change all the settings inside the App Store and things like that. And so Apple itself has been getting very, very sloppy. They have lost their good hardware. They have lost uh, their good uh, QA. They have lost all of it. Um, so Apple itself is not seeming to be very good. If they are still the richest company in a few years, I would actually be quite shocked because even the biggest Apple fanboys are starting to question what in the world they're doing. You know, when you have these types of security vulnerabilities, there were temporary patches, and then the next patch reissued the, the, the major problem. Then they finally got it patched, but the same problem goes on now in the, sto in the stores. So we have these questions about security. Like, Apple doesn't seem to have what they had before. They got really good and popular by having good hardware and good software and right now it doesn't seem like they have good hardware or good software um but of course um microsoft isn't any better now they just push out this article here um was this uh this was last year actually um and basically trying to push people away from windows 7 and onto windows 10 and to this day, Windows 7 and Windows 10 are right about equal user base. The thing is, there are still some security vulnerabilities, but the biggest thing for me is the privacy, which I put under security. Everything you do on Windows 10 reports itself and stores itself back up in, in, in Microsoft. And so we don't need systems that spy on each other or and spy on ourselves. And so in that respect, that is why I simply declare that security is better in um in linux because we don't have this this sloppy qa stuff we don't have uh, a lot of this tracking and the telemetry you're just running a better secure system in that respect and yes there are certainly some issues in linux as well um but it's not it it doesn't seem as as crazy mainstreamed as what's going on in the other operating systems Number two, you have options in your workflow. Uh, what I mean by options in your workflow, and this kind of ties into our number four point. We're going to get back to that later. But uh, you have the ability of how you want your workflow to go. You can easily change it and customize it. I personally, I like the workflow style of, of the classic Windows type system. Windows Vista, Windows 7 has a very good workflow. Windows 10 has that, that workflow to a, a large extent. There's some things that they're doing a lot differently now, but I love that workflow. And with Linux, I can choose an operating system that has that particular workflow. Uh, so for, 
Uh, for example here, I am on my Linux Mint computer and I have this set up just like that. I have these are not pinned to the taskbar, but they are launchers. Each time I click this button, it's going to load up an instance of this and I don't have to you know, mess around with middle buttons or whatever else because, you know, it's just a lot better to not have to worry about all those other things. I have down here, I can minimize my uh, all my windows really quickly. My setup is just like a Windows system, which is where I have found through a lot of trial and error that I am absolutely the most productive in that type of environment. So that's the way I'm doing things for production. Um, you also have... Uh, situations where you could pick up, um, uh, you could pick up some, uh, uh, set it up like a Mac type environment. If you like the the applications menu, pulling everything up. If you want to customize all your short codes, you can pick Linux systems that will have or will have the ability to alter those. If you want to have some hybrid in between, between the shortcut keyboard, the the keyboard shortcuts, etc., all of that kind of stuff, you can make all of those adjustments yourself. And uh, so in that respect, you have options in your workflow. Uh, and that is, that is certainly one of those, uh, one of those uh, things that, that you need is those options. Number three, your software is better than ever. And when I first came on to Linux, that's when the software really started to get good and, and just as robust as the software packages in, in all of the other companies. And I can say good thing because what we started to see is right around the time I was starting to come on to Linux a few years ago is when all of these companies started deciding that they wanted to go ahead and start pushing all of their software as subscription models. So the software we used to buy and you'd have it for probably the duration of the computer or until the next version came out and, and had a good reason for you to switch, you would keep, you know, you'd keep all the systems that you had had running. And nowadays though, software's not really getting any better. It's like they're pushing out new versions, but all they want to do now is just get more and more and more money out of it. And so now almost every major software is a subscription-based model. Now Microsoft Office still happens to have um, a single time purchase, uh, but I, I think that they're trying to phase that out. Uh, they're going in favor of the Office 365 model. Of course, all of Adobe is now subscription. Um, all of your um, uh, all of your uh, AutoCAD things. So your uh, those would be your uh, 3ds Max and AutoCAD applications. These are now all subscription models. So you need to keep paying either monthly or yearly to use the same applications you've been using. Well, with Linux, the software, one of the holdouts was that the software wasn't quite as good. But right now, if you, you're like, if you know all the software, like, you know, what are the, the, the top five video editing softwares? Guess what? One of those is going to be Kden Live, a completely free and open source application. Some people have said that that the Apple uh, software is is better. Some people have actually said it's get, been getting worse. I don't know. I don't use it. Um, there's always the Adobe software um, to, to do video editing. And that's still still pretty good. You can't get that on Linux, but you can get Kden Live everywhere. And people who use all of them, Kden Live will do pretty much anything you need it to do. And uh, there's not a whole ton of reason unless you're super high up, like a very dedicated portion of the small industry that might absolutely need one of the other applications, there's really not a lot of reason to uh, to have to use those other software packages because the software is getting better and better and better. Even LibreOffice now is so good. It's like, why use something else? Um, you have just any type of, of software out there that you're thinking of there are good free and open source options that are working better than they have ever worked before. Number four, tying into our number two is you have a choice in your appearance. Now, sometimes some people don't care about the appearance as much. I was setting up a, a computer for a friend yesterday and it's like, you know, do we want to go in here and customize everything? He's like, uh, no, I don't care. So as long as it works because he doesn't do the most of his work on a computer. Me, I'm surrounded by computers all day. So I like to at least have them look good. So this computer right behind me, this guy's running KDE. It's a very beautiful skeuomorphic um, 
backgrounds. The backgrounds on this thing are semi-transparent. So, you know, if I pull up things, there's you can kill, still kind of see the backgrounds behind it. I just have beautiful effects on this system. You can do that. If you just want something just plain and simple and out of the way, you can do that. And so with this, you want to look at what would be called the desktop environments. These will, will choose a whole lot in, in your choice of appearance. They can also help dictate your workflow. And so looking at these, you know, Cinnamon, this is the one that I use for all my Linux production machines because this is the environment I have found, the environment and the setup, that I'm absolutely the most proficient in my workflow. Now, I use this computer here to experiment with different workflows to figure out if there is still something better of everything this cinnamon is still the best workflow for me. Um, Unity, uh, of course, uh, Unity is, has been discontinued. You still can install it on top of Ubuntu. Uh, but the Unity desktop was just kind of, uh, it was it was kind of out of the way. I liked using this for things where I'm doing terminal heavy applications. Um, Gnome is what uh, um, Ubuntu is using now. I don't like it quite as much. That's a personal opinion. But you can have this, this uh, uh, app system that works very much like a Max app system. You can have this dock. You can have the dock show up only on, uh, you know, only when you're inside this app menu. You can have it always on the desktop. You can auto hide it. You can put it anywhere you want on the desktop. Of course, that goes for any Linux distro. You can install a dock like this everywhere and have the most beautiful animations uh, you can envision. Um, there's other things like KDE Plasma. That's what I'm running back here where we have a lot of widgets all over. I have a, a big launcher bar over here. I have my main launchers down at the bottom just outside of the screen here. Um, but then I also have it set up with uh, the high level of productivity that I like. So this guy here has all the, the Windows type productivity, but I also have uh, the ability to do a lot of other things with it. And that's why I like KDE. Uh, XFCE is uh, just a very nice, you know, you can put these panels up, down, left, or right, and uh, you can customize a lot of the functions and features on those panels. You can have multiple panels on each site. Same with LXDE. So there are a lot of choices in the appearance that you want, whether you're just looking for something uh, very simple or whether you're looking for something a whole lot more complex. You have the ability... Uh, to have your uh, your appearance exactly the way you want it, whether you just want it something simple and out of your way or whether you want to spend a few hours getting the entire desktop to look exactly the way you like it. It doesn't matter whichever way um, you can make that work. And number five, mostly free and open source software. Um, there are some that, that you need to pay for the software. There are some software packages you may want to run that are not open source. Uh, but for the most part, you can get a lot of software packages for Linux that are, uh, are free and are open source. And uh, whether that means your desktop environment or the core that you're running your system on or the applications themselves, you have a free and open source system that you can audit. You can make sure that it's not checking in home. You can make sure it's not doing any functionality you don't want to be doing. So you have that ability. So those are my top five reasons uh, to use Linux in 2018. And there will be more videos coming about which distros to use and which desktop and um, environments to use as um, as you are are carrying throughout the year. So thank you for watching. If you'd like to help support what we're doing, check out switchtolinux.com forward slash support for all of the latest means to support us. As of right now, we have a Patreon page, uh, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And we also have Amazon links in the description below. And on our support page on Switch to Linux, you will find a PayPal link if you just want to leave a tip uh, in that manner. So thank you for watching, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.